What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch with a couple of days to get playtime in on Overwatch for the Switch. I thought it was a good time to evaluate and give a review on the port. We will take a look at the game for players that are already familiar with Overwatch. It has been out three years after all, but as well, I will step back and take a look at it as a product from the perspective of a player who's brand new to Overwatch coming in. And that's where I want to start. If you're a player who hasn't purchased Overwatch for one of the other consoles or PC yet, and you only own a Switch or it's the main place you play, should you get Overwatch? Well, I've gone from PC to PS4 and now to the Switch. And the fun part about that is each time you can come to get a bit of a different perspective on the game. Through leveling up my account on the Switch, I'm reminded how much better Overwatch is as a casual game than the gaming community gives it credit for. I don't even think competitive mode is unlocked yet because let's face it, nobody's level 25 yet to even play it. So when you're forced to play the more casual mainstream modes, it's cool to see Overwatch in a new light because most of the negativity about the game in the general public come from the most vocal players who, like myself, mostly only play the competitive side of it. And I would say in that department, Blizzard has dropped the ball with, let's say, continuously delivering a reliable competitive experience. But with it stripped away and not even being available right now, you can come to appreciate the various different fun game modes that just let you experience the epic moments Overwatch can produce. And in doing so, you can realize that multiple improvements they put through to the game has actually buffed the casual side even better. Roll queue came out a few months ago, and I think it's buffed quick play more than it's buffed ranked. Quick play is way more fun being able to drop in and getting a reliable game with equal roles on both sides allows you to get the casual experience that you want with pretty short, reasonable queue times on all the roles. It goes up and down. Sometimes damage does have a waiting time, but sometimes it's the lowest queue time because the culture of playing in quick play is much different than it is in ranked. And it's a lot easier to just get immersed into playing a character you think is good for the situation or one you just want to play for the fun of it without someone screaming down the mic stressed out because their SR is on the line. When you combine this with the replay feature that allows you to go back and see something cool that you did or to finally answer that mythical question that all tank players have always asked since the dawn of time, what was our healer doing that whole game? Then on top of that, a bunch of fun arcade game modes and with the full cosmetic suite locked away, you're actually earning progress towards collecting something. All of this really reinforces the casual appeal of Overwatch. So that's the first segment of this review. For a new player just jumping into the game, I think you're going to have fun playing it casually. It's the moment where you try to go play it competitively, not really sure what you're supposed to do to improve. The game doesn't tell you very much. It's very easy to get steeped into the mindset that it's impossible to win and you can't carry. All these things are wrong, obviously. As I've shown in previous videos, decision-making alone carries games. If you actually know the entire macro stakes of the battlefield and the win conditions, but without taking a PhD course in Overwatch, it's difficult to appreciate those things. So. A lot of players, I think, get disillusioned with the game once they start to feel that the competitive experience isn't as fulfilling as other games. But treating it like a casual game, I think it's a win. Even with the criticisms, I'm going to levy against it as a port because the more casual you treat Overwatch, the better the Switch version is going to treat you anyway because the unfortunate performance quirks that it does have probably won't strain on you as hard if you're not grinding for that SR or trying to get top 500 on the Switch leaderboard. So now let's move on to talk about the performance of the Switch. There really is a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde relationship for the way the Switch functions with Overwatch, and I'm actually kind of confused, and I'm sure many of you are more intelligent than I am or more informed with how the development of these things work, but for some reason, Overwatch is spectacular in handheld mode. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say you will feel shocked at how clean it looks and how well it plays, in handheld mode. It is amazing that a multiplayer shooter can fit into this tiny screen and work so well. Some of the tech hiccups that I will bring up from docked mode rear their ugly head when in handheld, but for the most part, I either can't notice them or they happen far less. I haven't really put my finger down on which one that is. I don't know if it's because the screen is smaller that I just can't perceive the little hiccups or if the hardware works in a way that for some reason it works better in handheld. I do not know why this is. It's kind of counterintuitive because you would think when it's plugged into the dock, it would receive more power and therefore can kind of 
turn the game up a notch to get better performance. I'll show you some clips that I recorded on my cell phone, but this really doesn't show how strikingly beautiful the game can look in handheld. The cell phone makes it look all bleached out and pretty bad, but really it's a joy to look at when holding in your hands. For somebody who played on the black and white Game Boys many years ago as a kid, seeing a full AAA game run this cleanly in my hands is just shocking to me. And when you start to compare it to other Switch games, it actually beats them out in performance. I did spend some time playing Paladins on the Switch here and there over the course of it being out, but that game is significantly hampered by its performance struggles. I think Overwatch beats it in handheld mode, hands down, and has a significant edge in docked mode, though neither are very good at that. One more asterisk I want to add here. Handheld is the way to go, but you'll want to consider one of two different control mechanisms in order to really get the most out of the gameplay. I personally use the Hori Split Pad Pro, which essentially is like a full controller as Joy-Cons with big actual thumbsticks for aiming, which I think is a must. Or if you use Joy-Cons, I strongly suggest that you learn how to use the gyro controls because if you master the gyro controls, it's like using a mouse, kind of. I have no doubt in my mind that top 500 players are going to be gyro masters, at least for some of the skill shot hit scan characters that need to be able to flick to the head. Thumbsticks are not really good at flicks. And on top of that, I actually think the aim assist on Switch has been tuned down to compensate for how strong gyro can be, which I could be wrong about, but I'm almost certain there's less aim assist than there was on PS4. I think over time, you will start to see Widows and Ash players with some redonkulous flick shot aim to the head using gyro. I found it basically useless on tank characters, and a lot of the supports can benefit from just having super strong aim assist anyway. For most people, I don't think gyro is a good idea, but for elite level players, for sure it is. I just don't plan on joining you anytime soon. I'm really bad at the gyro controls. So overall, the game runs at 30 frames per second at the best of times. When in docked mode, hooked up to a TV, it felt more common that this frame rate would drop to what I would assume is either 20 or even 15 frames a second if a ton of things are going on on screen at once, especially with certain abilities that shoot out a lot of bullets at once, like when you use Roadhog's whole hog ability or even just shooting with D.Va, it feels like it's a lot of information for the game to process and because of that, while using these complex abilities, you'll see a lot of slowdown. This also happens when there's enemy Symmetra walls in place and a lot of interactions on screen, you will regularly get significant slowdown to its performance. I mentioned that first because that affects your performance of playing the game. The reason why so many shooter fans always want to at least see 60 frames per second with their games is that any sluggishness with the frame rate is going to inhibit your ability to play. For example, early on when I was getting to grips with playing the game on Switch, the frame rate at times felt impossible to play. Now granted, trying to hit a Lucio as Tracer is difficult when they're moving like this anyway, but it feels much harder to do it when your frames are dropping and you don't really feel like you have immediate control over your character. Now, luckily with Overwatch, lots of the characters aren't incredibly precise. They shoot projectiles or spam or are melee or have beams or often they can feel much easier to play. So overall, this isn't a deal breaker for me with the system, but it's pretty close to being so. If you play a lot of tank and support like I do, you won't mind. And a lot of the DPS play offset of the engagement anyway. So when I play DPS, I feel like I get less of this frame droppage than when I'm a tank in the front line with the mix of everything going on. But still, at random intervals, the frames are going to drop to what most of us would deem an unacceptable level. Keep in mind, in handhold mode, I barely noticed this. And my assumption is when you dock the system, it's trying to put the same gameplay at a higher resolution. And because of that, the system chugs, but it also looks a lot worse. In handheld, the game looks like it's pretty much perfectly Overwatch. The details are small enough where you don't really notice the jaggies or the blemishes or the poor texture quality. But once you blow that up to a monitor size or a TV, it's very distinctly a drop in quality. And even sometimes the Switch does do the dynamic resolution stuff, which essentially means certain things in the background are going to be blurrier than things in the foreground. Though I can't say I've seen this a lot, but it's happened to me a couple times. There's a lot of other annoyances that 30 frames per second brings up as well. For example, with the frame rate being slower, there's a lot of chaos in Overwatch that on other platforms this might not really come up, but on the Switch, you definitely will notice 
that the tells of abilities won't be as clear and obvious when the enemy is throwing a bomb at you that can kill you or something that you need to react to immediately. With higher frames, you can see these animations wind up more clearly, but at 30 frames, the game plays fast enough where in some cases it can just happen so quick that you don't even get a chance to react. This is sort of the nature of playing at a lower frame rate, but it's also the nature of a lacking netcode. The Nintendo Switch online service is pretty well known for not being the greatest greatest all of the games suffer from lag that was ever present in the Xbox 360 era. And I lived through that era. I survived, but it was annoying and it will annoy you now. Maybe more so if you're used to the much more improved network infrastructure playing on the other platforms. And when you combine that with the game running kind of sluggish at times with the Nintendo servers being a bit questionable, you have a lot of experiences that are just more unreliable than they are on other platforms. And sometimes it's hard to figure out if it's the game or the network struggling but as the end user you kind of don't care which way it comes from i'll keep in mind i have fiber internet now so it's not my internet speed that works fine but um for a concrete example of a typical bug that comes up which i've only experienced reliably on switch is for some reason sometimes you'll use an ability or just do an action in game no matter what it is and the server will decide you didn't do that here i throw my on nade at the hog you see the animation go out i didn't die nothing's happening but the action doesn't register i get my nade back and i throw it again weird huh here's another example of it where I get a bubble, I know the Orisa used Fortify, and I want to pin in. I press the button, I start to do the animation, drop my shield and everything, but the server decides, nope, that didn't go through. And this is so jarring as a player. It just takes you out of the immersion or your concentration or whatever you want to call it immediately. And I have to panic and decide, well, do I want to pin? Am I getting out? Like, what even is the state of the play I'm in? Because the game just decided the thing I wanted to do got refunded to me with really no way of knowing it's going to do this until it's already been done. This bug's pretty bad, and I can say after a few days of playing, I think it can reliably come up about once a game, just often enough to remind you how annoying it is. It isn't a constant thing, and I'm sure there's games where it never came up at all, but it feels like once a game for me. And when you start to add in all these little snags and performance and annoyances, it starts to build up a constant reminder that you're playing the game on a system that's struggling to run it. I assume this bug itself is a rubber banding issue, which I also see a bit of, which if you don't know, essentially is your version of the game and the server disagree on something and then your version of the game snaps back to reality and things teleport, abilities come back. In other games, this typically happens with enemy players where they will just teleport across the screen. I've only seen that happen a couple times, but this ability glitch is more prominent for some reason. Other annoyances that come up when you backfill, as in you join a game that's been in progress, the models take so long to load that you can enter an entire team fight before you can see your teammates or the enemy. And I didn't backfill that many times. So again, not a huge deal, but this does affect highlight intros at the end of the game currently, where the fun of the highlight intros really gets robbed by the fact that you can't see any of the characters involved. So a lot of these things, I tend to wonder if they can be fixed with a patch. That does happen with these kinds of games. And especially since some of the user end problems happen less in the handheld mode, it would be nice to dream that the docked mode would start to get cleaned up as well. But they've been working on this for quite a long time, so I wouldn't keep my hopes up for that. So overall, let's bring this all to a conclusion. I would say I would suggest picking up Overwatch on the Switch if you're the following types of player. If you don't own any of the other platforms where you can play Overwatch, and you want to get into the game, it's still a premier shooter game, and the Switch doesn't have many offerings as is. So despite these annoyances, realize that just about every console online game has some kind of annoyance. None of them work as smoothly as they do on the PC, and even then there's annoyances as well. They just sort of shrink as you go up the upgrade curve. So if you're that kind of player, it's worth getting into because there is fun to be had for sure. Next, if you're the kind of player who is interested in playing Overwatch on the Switch at least 50% of the time in handheld mode and then maybe sometimes dabbling in docked mode just to keep your progression going and play on that same account. I would say tread lightly, but if you plan to mostly play in handheld mode, I think that's the best option. And sometimes I was sitting on my couch with it plugged into docked to a gaming monitor, feeling like I really should be picking it up and holding it 
in my hand because the game just feels like that's the intended way to play. And as I already own Overwatch on the PS4 and the PC, if I want to play it on a TV, really I should be playing it on the PS4. Or if I want the most competitive experience, I'd go to the PC. Guys, it's going to be everything for my Nintendo Switch Overwatch review. If you found it useful and enjoyed it, please be sure to leave the video a like. It really does help us out and let us know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you actually get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito. If you're Overwatch, see you guys next time.